This week, we are going to begin a new five-week series entitled The Always God. And the goal of our series is pretty straightforward. It's to show that just as God moved in the past, He is still moving in the present as well. For example, we see Him pursuing people in the Bible, and He's still pursuing people today. He's restoring people in the Bible, and what we will see here in our series here is, is how he is still in the restoring business today. He provided people for people in the past, and he is still providing for his people today. You see, God has not changed over time, and the one who revealed himself as the great I Am, the eternal, self-existent, infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing God, what the series is going to attempt to put forth is that the I am is still the I am. And today I want us to learn about how God is still speaking. Now we know from scripture how, how God spoke the very world into existence. In a simple reading of Genesis chapter 1, we discover ten times the phrase, and God said, and whatever he spoke, either came into being or was obeyed and fulfilled. We read in the Old Testament and see God speaking to his people, Israel, by continually speaking to them through the different prophets and priests and kings that he raised up. We're going to take a look at one of those prophets today, Moses, as we learn how God spoke to him. And in the New Testament, God spoke through his son. The first couple of verses in Hebrews Chapter 1 puts it like this. He says, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. We read about God speaking through the pages of Scripture, and the, the purpose of today's message is to acknowledge that he is still speaking today. And so I, I want to begin our time with, as I often do, asking a question, because that's what why kids do. I ask questions. So do you actually believe this? Do you believe that God can, will, and does speak? And if God is still speaking, how can we know it's really him? What, what does his voice sound like? Is this a speaking that's audible? Is it intelligible? This is an incredible, Im incredibly important question for us to answer. These are all questions that we need to know because God is still the same God. <clears throat> so let me bring it in and ask us a little more personal. Is God speaking to you? When was the last time... He did, and how confident were you that it was him? When a situation arises, when a decision is before you, when a choice must be made, when wisdom is needed, how do you know how to discern his voice? And do you believe God is still speaking today? Either in your Bibles or on your phones, Go to Exodus chapter 3 as we get started. Some of you might be familiar with a book by Henry Blackaby and Claude King. They wrote a best-selling book entitled Experiencing God. And there's a great workbook with that. If you've never done that, I would encourage you to do that book, by the way. 
And taking this message right here in Exodus chapter 3, he writes four distinguishing marks of God speaking. And I want to share those things, those four with you. From this text, Moses' experience says when God spoke, it was usually unique to the individual. Moses had a burning bush. But that was different than he spoke to Abraham or Elijah or even Samuel. So I doubt that Amos are going to get a burning bush. But if you're going home today, David, you see something burning over there? You might want to check it out. I don't know. I'm not going to limit God, but I'll guarantee you this. It's generally unique to the individual. When God spoke, the person was sure that God was speaking. God introduced himself to Moses, didn't he? He said, this is the Lord your God of Abraham, Jacob, and I, you know, this is who it is. Moses, there was no doubt, and he was told that the ground that he was standing was holy ground. When God spoke, the person knew what God said. There wasn't any doubt that it was this was God's word. They might have doubted that they were up to the task, but they didn't doubt what the job was. Moses understood quite well, didn't he, what God wanted to do. That's why he had a number of uh, excuses. And fourth, when God spoke, this was the encounter with God. There was no looking behind another door. This was God, it was a God experience. This was the experience that of God speaking. Making it very clear. Now, some of you might have the immediate pushback by saying, Mark, you know, Moses was different. That was a, a you know, he had specific people in the Bible that he spoke to, and he doesn't speak like that to me. And he doesn't speak like that to people I know living in the here and now. And uh, you know what? I, I want to agree with you. I cannot say that I have ever heard an audible voice of God. But I will stand before you to tell you that I have heard God speaking to me. God moving me in a certain direction. I understand that. You know, we might like to have Exodus 33, 11, and says He said of Moses, he says, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. You know, we like that aspect. We have a personal God. And as awesome as that sound, it would be terrifying at the same time, wouldn't it? To be face to face with the creator of the universe. If he would show up in my office tomorrow and speak to me face to face, scared with him tar out of me, I'm sure. But I doubt that that's going to happen. God may choose to do that, but he's going to choose something that is going to be unique to me, like he'll choose it with you. And I wish God did speak face to face. And sometime with everything that's going on in the world, I wish he would make it clear sometimes. And that would be some kind of an experience, wouldn't it? But just because he doesn't speak face to face doesn't mean that he doesn't speak. That he's not working. God is still speaking today, and you can be sure that he is speaking. You can be certain of what he is saying, and you can have an encounter and an experience with the living God. And let's talk about how, because this is crucial. As Blackaby and King state in their book, if you have trouble hearing God speak, you are in trouble at the very heart of your Christian experience. It's a continual growing process. It doesn't just stop at baptism. Jesus put it this way, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We know the Savior's voice. The I Am is still speaking. And how can we be certain? Well, let's go to how, the, how God generally speaks to everyone, if you will. And let's compare it with how he specifically then speaks to those who follow him. So yes, those of you who have an outline, you're going, oh boy, he will be here all day. It's a good thing we finished earlier, huh? God, first of all, speaks through creation. Sometimes people think, I, I sure wish God would write it in the skies that he exists. He does. 
every single day. Listen to Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. We know this to be true. No one has, has stood before the vastness of a mountain range and looked upon a, a starry sky or on the shore of the ocean watching the sun rise or set and thought, wow, how great am I? Have you ever experienced that? You're looking at something so majestic and you think, boy, how good am I? How great am I? That's not how it is. In that moment, we know that there is something greater, something more that we are to put in our place, that we're put in our place, and that it is God who is speaking to us through creation. And Paul wrote this in Romans 1. He says, For the wrath of God is revealed from the heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteous and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Verse 19 here. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world. Everything has been made by him, and so they are without excuse. God speaks to us through his creation. You see, in creation, he shows us that he values what he values in diversity and order and consistency and beauty. Rebecca Barlow, Jordan, she writes these words. I thought this was pretty good. By observing an ant's strength to store up food all summer long, we learn God's wisdom and work. By planting and growing a garden, we see the cycle of death and rebirth. By placing our finger on our breathing pulse and our lungs taking in oxygen, neither of which we control or command it, we know that we are not the ruler of our domain. There is a creator, and he is speaking to us. Trying to to get our attention through his creation. God speaks through creation. He also speaks through conscience. All of us have a conscience. Paul wrote here in Romans chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, says, For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, they are a law to themselves, even though they don't have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. The conscience. Now, the conscience can't always be truly trusted, because sin and other things get in the way, and we'll discuss in a moment. But our consciences can be deceived and are limited to a degree, but we have that because God has put it there. And I only mention that to say to be careful about that old adage that says, says, follow your gut. Do what feels right. We live in a society that follows that a lot of times, and that can get us into trouble, can't it? The Bible tells us that our own hearts can deceive us. 